Hi all, and welcome to the Paul Chandler Show. I'm your host, Paul Chandler. In tonight's discussion, we're going to be talking about excludes 1 and excludes 2, referring to diagnosis coding. Those are two different policies that we have to follow, and there's quite a few different rules on them. Some of them will make no sense whatsoever, and disclaimer, I did not write the policies, and some will make actually quite common sense. So after we come back in a moment, we'll be discussing excludes 1 and excludes 2 in diagnosis coding. Now, in discussing excludes 1 and excludes 2, this is a new concept when we converted back to ICD-10 CM way back on October 1, 2015. Under the good old days with ICD-9, we only had excludes. The old excludes is the equivalent of excludes 2 today. So excludes 1, though, since that was new to us back in 2015 upon the conversion to ICD-10 CM, it was the first year after they realized that, yeah, how excludes 1 was meant to be designed doesn't quite work out. Just like when, say, if a car maker makes out a new uh, model of a car, you generally don't get the first year, kind of let them get the kinks out of it, and then get year number two mating. So how do you code excludes one? We're going to be looking at the code example F45.8 of the somatoform disorders, because why not trying to say a difficult word over and over and over again? So F45.8 of the somatoform disorders. So again, this is in NEC code, not elsewhere classified. So, and this would be an example of, we know what type of somatoform disorder the patient has, but it's none of the code options listed above F45.8. Now, when we look under that code description, we have six examples there listed, all the way from psychogenic dysphoria to teeth grinding. But there in the, uh, under F45.8, there's the excludes one rule, uh, excludes sleep-related teeth grinding, G47.63. So what that would mean normally is F45.8 and G47.63, we could never, ever, ever code together. But like I said, though, after the first year came about for ICD-10-CM, they realized, yeah, that quite doesn't actually make sense. Because F45.8 could mean one of several different things. So let's say F45.8 is, in this case, used for psychogenic dysphoria. So I'll just put PD underneath it. So patient has psychogenic dysphoria, F45.8. But if the patient also has sleep-related teeth grinding, G47.63, those are two unrelated conditions. So the patient could have both those conditions at the same time. Then it would be okay to code F45.8 with that excludes one code, G47.63. So this right here can be coded, yet this would go against the excludes one rule, which would normally mean you cannot code these two codes together at the same time. So this is one of the many exceptions to the rule. How it was meant to be designed when you cannot code both codes together is let's say another example of F45.8, instead of, for example, psychogenic dysphoria, we're gonna use that code for teeth grinding. That falls into the other category. So if F45.8, we're using it for teeth grinding, but then the patient has sleep-related teeth grinding, G47.63. This is how excludes one was normally designed. So we have a generic option, teeth grinding, F45.8, then a specific type of teeth grinding that's sleep-related, G47.63. So if this is the case, then excludes one we would not code these two codes together because we have a generic description of the condition with a specific description of the condition. So it excludes one. In this case, we would only code the G47.63. If the patient has teeth grinding, that being more descriptive is sleep-related teeth grinding. So again, this is how excludes one was supposed to be designed for when it came about for us. You can never code these two codes together. In this scenario, we wouldn't. We have a generic phrase, 
and a more specific phrase. We code the most specific IC10 code for the condition. So if a patient has teeth grinding, and that teeth grinding just happens to be sleep-related teeth grinding, excludes one would apply, we would only code the G47.63. But again, like I said, after the first year, they realize, yeah, this doesn't quite work out that way. Sometimes you have to code these two codes together. Patient has sleep dysphoria, F45.8. Patient has sleep-related teeth grinding, G47.63. There you would code both codes together because sleep-related teeth grinding is not a more specific type of psychogenic dysmorphia. PD, SRTG, kind of putting the acronyms in there, we have psychogenic dysmorphia, uh, nowhere in sleep-related teeth grinding do we see the term psychogenic dysmorphia. So with the exclude one rule, then we do have to know some clinical background or be able to, if we're on the coder or auditor side, be able to query a provider or look up in a medical resource if those two conditions are related to one another. So generically speaking, with exclude to one, when we see we have a condition and it has a list of excludes one, if those two conditions are not related to one another, we still code the two codes. If those conditions are related to one another, for example, a generic type of the description and a specific type of the description, then we do not code those two codes together We'd only use the one more specific code there. So with excludes one, again, that's the newer format that came about under ICD-10. But then we also have excludes two. And this is the simple way of thinking as excludes two as a stop. We're going to reroute you. Just like how, for example, I use an iPhone and even though I use Google Maps on an iPhone, but no matter if you, whatever your GPS preference is, that let's say if you're driving around, you have your GPS located to where you're at, you type in a destination, and you follow hopefully the path and tell you how to get there, maybe either the shortest distance or often the quickest route to get there, based example on traffic. But if you actually make a wrong turn, then your GPS kind of freaks out for a little bit and it's like rerouting, 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 and then it gets you on the path again. Think of that as excludes two, where you know your destination but you end up going the wrong way instead. So for example, if we were to look up J37.1. So if we look up that code description, J37.1, that would be for chronic laryngotracheotitis. So chronic, they've had it for a good period of time. Laryngotracheotitis, itis for inflammation. So we're dealing with the larynx and the trachea. But then we have excludes two with the J37.1. The exclude two options that we have are the codes J04.2 and the code J04.1. So looking at those descriptions, in J37.1, we have as chronic laryngotracheotitis, excludes two, we have acute laryngotracheotitis for J04.2 and acute tracheotitis for J04.1. So think of that as if our final destination, say if we need acute laryngotracheotitis. So same location, larynx and the trachea, inflammation of the larynx and the trachea, if we need acute laryngotracheotitis, going through the front index in the ICD-10 book, if we have the main term and we're doing the dropdowns, maybe we can get off kilter a little bit on the dropdowns. And if we need acute laryngotracheotitis, but somehow end up by looking at the front in the ICD-10 book, then go back to the code, and we accidentally end up at J37.1. Think of that as we have our destination, J04.2. That's what we plug into our GPS. We get rerouted because we just accidentally, in the front index, went down the wrong dropdowns. We get rerouted, and we're looking at a J37.1. That's when you stop, you have the wrong location, I'm going to reroute you to J04.2 if you actually need acute laryngotracheotitis. Or let's say if you need just acute tracheotitis, so just the trachea, not involving the larynx. And if you need a J04.1 for acute tracheotitis, I'm going to reroute you there. So the excludes 2 is just a nice simple way to help us that when we're coding in the front of the IC10CM manual in the front and the alphabetical index with those drop downs, because yes, 
The font does get smaller and smaller every single year because I've had these now for about two years I've been back and I do turn the big 4-0 um, this month. So it seems like I don't know if I'm because I'm getting older, but the font gets smaller and smaller every single year. So hopefully it's not just me. But that way it does happen. We're looking at the front index, we do the wrong drop down. So X lose 2 is just an awesome way that if we accidentally made that wrong turn in the front index, we go to the back of the book to always verify the code. If it's not the right code that we need, stop, I'm going to reroute you to the right ones that you do need there. So again, just a simple recap, excludes one normally means we can never, ever, ever code these two codes together. But the exception to the rule is though, if those two conditions are not related to one another, then you do code those two codes together. If those two codes, the conditions are related to one another, where one is a generic code description and one is a specific code description, just as long as a patient has that specific condition, then with excludes one, we only code that one code, the more specific option. And then in the excludes two is a rerouting, rerouting on your GPS on your phone, where if you're looking up a description in the front, you do the drop downs, accidentally do the wrong drop down, you go to the back of the book, the tabular list, and verify the code, you end up with the wrong code, I'm gonna stop and reroute you to one of the different codes that you need there. So do thank you for watching this discussion on Exclus 1 and Excludes 2. And remember to visit our website, thepaulchandlershow.com, and up at the top there's a button you can click on Topic Suggestion. We'd love to hear suggestions, and that way we can be provide education for what our viewers would like to hear and see. So again, thank you for watching this education on Excludes 1 and Excludes 2, and have an awesome rest of the day. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's so easy. It's right there. The little button. Just push it. Subscribe. I got all night. Nothing else to do. Just subscribe. <laughs>